His name was Heath Robinson. He was a father, a soldier, and a fitness fanatic. In an interview with the Columbus Dispatch a few years ago, he told the paper that at his peak, he could bench press 315 pounds, squat 400, and run two miles in under 12 minutes. He was twice named non-commissioned officer of the year by the Ohio Army National Guard for his physical prowess. In 2017, Sergeant First Class Heath Robinson was training for a half marathon when he began to feel weak and tired. A month later, he got devastating news. He had lung cancer that had already spread to his bones and elsewhere. Doctors gave him four to eight weeks to live. Sergeant First Class Heath Robinson held on much longer than that. But in May of 2020, he died. How did a healthy man contract such a serious cancer seemingly out of nowhere? His family believes it was from burn pits, toxic piles of flaming waste that Heath was exposed to during his time serving in Iraq. And his death was on a rare, isolated case. An estimated three and a half million veterans have been exposed to toxic substances like burn pits since the September the 11th attacks, which is why Congress decided to do something to help those veterans. Legislation giving them access to the health care and support they desperately need. The bill was called the Sergeant First Class Heath Robinson Honoring Our Promise to Address Comprehensive Toxics Act. An early version of the bill to help these veterans passed the Senate earlier this year with overwhelming bipartisan support. The vote was 84 to 14. The Senate was supposed to take a procedural vote on that legislation last night, with final passage slated for the end of the week. But then Democrats announced that they had struck a surprise deal on a big budget package of climate, health care and tax policies. And that made Republicans angry. A win for Joe Biden's agenda? Not on their watch. So apparently they took revenge. So Senate Republicans, members of a party which love to wave the flag and say they support the troops, seem to take their frustrations out about the advance of Joe Biden's agenda on sick and ailing veterans. They blocked. They blocked that bill to help veterans affected by toxic burn pits. Today at a press conference outside the Capitol, Sergeant First Class Heath Robinson's mother-in-law took the podium in her late son-in-law's army jacket to offer her thoughts on the Republicans' brave stance against veterans. Senator Toomey, Senator Rob Portman, is he was he senator. Voted no. They voted against my family. They voted for all of us to suffer. Every single one has pictures with veterans on their Facebook pages, on their websites. Well, screw that. They don't support veterans. If you vote no on this bill, you do not support veterans. I'm done. And the next time I come back here, it better be to sign the damn bill at the White House. Because I'm sick and tired of this bullshit. Standing alongside Heath Robinson's mother-in-law at that press conference is a face you might recognize. Comedian John Stewart, who has used his platform and fame to push for a number of veterans' health bills. And he turned up on Capitol Hill today to call out the GOP senators voting against that bill. I'm used to the lies. I'm used to the hypocrisy. I'm used to the cowardice. I've been here a long time. Senate's where accountability goes to die. These people don't care. I'm used to all of it, but I am not used to the cruelty. Cowards, all of them. Cowards, all of them. They haven't met a war they won't sign up for, and they haven't met a veteran they won't screw over. What the f*** are we? This is an embarrassment to the Senate, to the country, to the founders and all that they profess to hold dear. And if this is America first, then America is f- Joining us now in his car parked at a rest area on the Jersey Turnpike is John Stewart, comedian, activist, and host of The Problem with John Stewart on Apple TV+. John has done incredible coverage of burn pit exposure on his show, and he's kind enough to join us tonight on his way home from Washington. John, thank you so much for being here. I said that that was a retaliatory move by Republicans. Other news outlets have reported the same. The Republicans say they're only taking issue with one small part of the bill. Can you explain to our viewers what their argument is and whether you you think it makes sense? Uh, so I don't know anything about the, the retaliation part. What I do know is 
this is the same bill that they passed 84 to 14 on June 16th. Uh, the small fix that needed to be done in the House was a procedural one based on a really non-material clause that was put in. There was one sentence about rural VA, uh, you know, the VA being able to take over rural medical practices so that veterans who live far away from VA facilities could still have access. It was a very small provision. It was placed in there by uh, the VA. There was a constitutional issue with it from the House parliamentarian, I guess. So the House went back and fixed it, put it back to the House, got 90 more Republican votes for it than they had gotten the first time. And the Senate was just supposed to rubber stamp it because it's pretty much the exact same bill that they voted overwhelmingly for on June 16th. The issue arose when Senator Pat Toomey, Patriot Pat, I like to call him, as I've been sitting in my car now for probably about 11 hours today, so I'm a little punchy. Uh, he put in uh, an amendment that basically said, because in the version that they passed on June 16th in the Senate, the veterans' health care is mandatory spending. It's, you know, the mandatory, the uh, discretionary, these are budgetary tranches that the government uses. The reason why it was done yes. this way is so that the government couldn't, if they were promising the veterans the health care they need, they couldn't then go and raid money from agriculture or they couldn't raid money from uh, foods that they, they can't raid other discretionary things by making it mandatory. Toomey is suggesting that that means it's $400 billion of a slush fund. It's a ridiculous argument. It's nonsense. The VA secretary still, even if it's mandatory spending, the VA secretary has to submit every year to Congress, yeah. the House and the Senate, both appropriations committees, what the spending is going to be and what it's going to revolve around. And what's so outrageous is that these same Republican senators are willing to spend trillions of dollars sending people to fight foreign wars, but not to take care of them when they come back hurt and exposed to burn pits. Yep. You're, you're singing my song, brother. You know, there's something called the OCO, the Overseas Contingency Operations Fund. And the Congress has been funding it for years now, between $40 billion and $70 billion every year. It's a true slush fund. It goes right to the Department of Defense, a tiny bit for state, but there are no guardrails on it and there's no oversight. That's a slush fund. That's a fund that can be used to spend things that none of us can have our eyes on. And Pat Toomey never had a problem with that. And he never yeah. had a problem spending trillions of dollars to send these people into John, harm's way. One of the things you said today, we just played you saying, is you said you're used to the lies, the hypocrisy, the cowardice. You're not used to the cruelty. I have to ask, as someone, I watched you in the 2000s, you know, covering the GOP every night, covering George W. Bush. How different, I mean, that was a pretty extreme Republican Party. I'm not going to give a pass to Bush's Republican Party. But how extreme do you believe this current Republican Party is compared to that one? I mean, look, I, you know, I, I had different issues with different eras. W what I was referring to was you have a group of people who came home from war, a traumatizing event to begin with. And whether they fought for this country to, to defend the flag or to fight for freedom or because it was their only choice between that and prison or a drug treatment program, it doesn't matter. They lived up to their obligation to this country. They yes. lived up to their oath. And when they came home, they found that the consequences of their heroism and their valor was their health. And then this country abandoned them. And so these individuals have been fighting, by the way, standing on the shoulders of the Vietnam veterans who are still fighting these same battles and the Persian Gulf War veterans who are still fighting these battles. And, and really every generation of veterans that we've ever had, boy, we love war but boy we don't like to clean up the consequences always money for war never money for the war fight yes and, and that's and been John, the issue yeah i'm sorry on monday chuck schumer says he's going to hold another vote on this bill do you think it'll pass on monday and if it doesn't 
Will the Republican Party that claims to be the party of the flag of the military, will it suffer any political consequences for this outrageous vote? Well, isn't that isn't that the issue? Look, you and I can talk about it till we're blue in the face. They're never going to hear this. There's an information silo. Uh, I was lucky enough to be able to get a hold of Newsmax this morning and go on there. Might have been the first time those viewers had ever heard about it. Fox News, they've refused to put me on all day. We've been begging them to get on the air all day long so that we can finally bring along some possible accountability to these senators. By the way, most of whom voted for the bill and then turned around and voted against it, even though there was no material change. I've never seen anything like it. Nobody on the Hill has ever seen anything like it. And the truth is, the people who've suffered the most and had to fight the hardest are the ones who will once again bear the brunt yes. of this, uh, you know, this betrayal. It's uh, honestly, it, it you question the very foundation. And, you know, they keep talking about, boy, there's a recruitment problem in the army because of the pronouns they're using. It's not the pronouns. It's that young people see that this government doesn't live up to its obligations to its fighters. It's as simple as that. It's a it's a betrayal, as you put it, John, and it is as simple as that. And I thank you so much for pulling over on your way home tonight and joining us and outlining this issue again for the end of time today. You shouldn't have to do this. I may may go in and get a smoothie. Now I'm at a rest. Get a smoothie. Get a smoothie. You deserve a smoothie after what you've done today. We appreciate you, John Stewart. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you so much for staying on this. And and please, as much as you can, keep getting the word out. We, We really appreciate it. We will. Thank you. Safe driving.